You know, I've seen Mike Sullivan in the best of times and the worst of times. I have seen him in moods after winning Stanley Cups. I have seen him in moods after Tom Wilson did something. And I have never, never seen him like I did here last night in Ottawa. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. Senators 5, Penguins 4 in overtime. And if only that told the story, it really, really doesn't. The Penguins put up four goals on Cam Talbot because Talbot was shaky. The Senators put up their four goals in regulation on the Penguins, all via the power play because they were handed just an endless string of them by the incompetent referees at hand, Ghislaine Hebert and Dan O'Rourke. I can't even begin to pick which of the two was worse because they both seemed hell-bent on just consuming the game. From both teams' perspective, only it ended up really, really biting the Penguins when they got hit with five penalties in a row. And look, I knew it was going to be a tough interview session afterward, but that wasn't going to stop me from trying. What contributed to that, Mike? Uh, was it, I mean, guys missing calls, the other team making the calls easy on them? I don't, I don't even have an answer for you. Oh, if only the audio could convey the faces that he was making, the expression, the angst, as he wanted so badly to get fined. And at the same time, he didn't want to get fined. And he didn't want to go into the bad book in general of the referees everywhere who hate when coaches speak up against them and will be vindictive about it. So the head coach carried himself pretty well, I thought, under this circumstance. The better part of the hockey team kind of carried itself well under that circumstance, meaning they're still missing half of their blue line. They're still missing Tristan Jari. They're still missing two-thirds of their fourth line. They're missing a third of their roster. Okay, that's not me making an excuse for them. That's an actual real live verifiable thing and it's not gonna go away anytime particularly soon and that's you know look at the standings look at the standings so while they did get the point here on Ricard Raquel's late goal a turnaround shot off a terrific pass from Sidney Crosby getting one point out of two from the Senators well it Probably felt as good here as it would in Pittsburgh tomorrow night with the rematch. It's it, it just stinks, you know? It's a lot like if they hadn't managed to pull that one out against the Ducks the other night. There's a lot of these right now. There's a lot of these squeakers. There's a lot of this just scraping by for points type of games. And that's in part the state of the team, meaning their health. It's also in part, you know, unusual or unforeseen circumstances like the officiating in this game. But man, you know what I'm going to say now if you're a regular listener, right? Come on. You saw that. You saw that. That that's that's not a contender. That's a team that was chasing around a bunch of kids. And sometimes, at least in a couple of those occasions, those penalties were legit. Jeff Carter can't keep up with this game. He can't. Brian Dumoulin, God love him, okay? I mean, he's playing his mind out right now in terms of effort. He really is. Leading the team in ice time, he's out there for all those kills. He was the first guy over the boards for every one of those. Just keeps making mistake after mistake, giveaway after giveaway, And Carter so far behind the play, he can't even make giveaways anymore because he doesn't have the puck to give it away. I don't know how they just watch this 
And my they in this case is Ron Hextall and Brian Burke. Those are the two. They were there. They were there. They were up there in the press box. They were watching the game. I don't think they were, you know, looking down at their phones or, you know, checking out TikTok clips or whatever. I think they were watching the game. And I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that and never make, apparently, any sort of assessment that this team is missing something very significant beyond the injuries. The easiest, laziest thing you can do in this situation, if you're the GM or, in Burke's case, the president of hockey operations, is to say, well, when everybody was fine, we were the best team in the NHL for a month. Okay, fair in the standings. But watch the games. They watch the games. They know this. They watch it at an expert level that's miles above anything I could ever concoct. They know. They know this team can't keep up. They know this team can't get energy from its third and fourth lines. And yet, everything's just being allowed to proceed as is. Why? Oh, no. We're backed up against the cap. Oh, no. Can't deal with that. Well, Hextall's predecessors were always also up against the cap. They still found ways to get things done. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q entry comes from Michael, who says, plain and simple, and not at all in question form, I'd be shocked if they make the playoffs, let alone even make it a series against whoever they'd play. Day on every game, it's the same stuff and no improvement. And, you know, Michael, I'm kind of inclined to agree at the moment. Um, It is the moment. That's what we're in. Um, that's what I'm in, just having been in that arena and talked to these people and, of course, covered that game. And I ha- don't have an easy time transporting myself uh, back into the middle of December when the Penguins were flying high and beating everybody. And most significant, I felt during that stretch taking care of some of the better teams, but doing it their way. If you want to feel a little bit good about anything at all this morning, Mike, think back to the game in Winnipeg. Think back to the game against the Rangers. Uh, Think back to some of the – there hasn't been a whole lot, but the divisional hockey uh, that they've played. Think about the first two periods against Boston. Is that okay? Don't, Don't pay any attention to what happened after that. But the Bruins are the class of the league, and the Penguins just schooled them for 40 straight minutes. And that's the kind of stuff that you can look at and say, all right, this is what the potential is. This is what this team can do if it has all of its people together and all of its faculties together. Except that the overwhelming percentage of this season, including that sizzling month, saw nothing or next to nothing come from your third and fourth lines. And you don't go anywhere without four-line depth in the modern NHL. You just don't. You just don't. I had talks with players before the game yesterday here in Ottawa uh, related to that subject. Teddy Bluger was one of the guys that I – it basically pushed. So where's this? Where's this energy going to come from? What's it going to take to have an effective Teddy line again? And he, Teddy's, how do I put this? Teddy's not the type to talk all bombastic. Okay, he'll be honest with you. He'll tell you the truth, but he's not going to get uh, down to. Well, what am I going to do? I don't have any wingers. My guys are hurt and whatever else, and they are. Ryan Paling and Josh Archibald are still out. And, you know, we're a long ways off from Teddy having Brandon Tanev and Zach Aston Reese around him. And he just said, we have to all 
play better. We have to do this. We have to chip in and we have to. And, and I hear that and I get that. And I talk to a couple other guys that are in the similar roles uh, to what Teddy's in, meaning third and fourth lines. And they had pretty much the same stuff to say. But there wasn't one of them who said something or even thought in all likelihood something along the lines of, man, why is Jason Zucker the one that always needs to get us going? Why? How is that not embarrassing to us? We're the ones on the third and fourth lines. We're supposed to be bringing the energy. We're supposed to be wearing the other team down on a night, frankly, like last night. You had Sid putting up three points and looking like a world beater there in the third period. You had Gino going that way the whole game. Everyone's talking about things got old. They kept the core together, brought the band back or whatever. It's nonsense. Those guys are doing plenty enough. What's not happening is around them or in the case of the line chart, beneath them. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these back home tomorrow.